I am so glad you're here because today we're diving into the nanoscale with a fascinating topic, quantum dots. These tiny particles are revolutionizing fields like medicine, nanotechnology, and even solar cells. And in this video, we're going to be diving into what makes these particles so special that they even just won a Nobel Prize. One of the most important things about quantum dots is that their size affects their properties, specifically things like the band gap. The band gap is the energy difference between the valence band and the conduction band in any material. For large molecules and large particles and large materials, this band gap is going to be fixed. So for example, silicon has a very specific band gap, or the energy difference between the valence band and the conduction band, and that is stationary and it's unable to change. However, for things like quantum dots, by simply changing the size of the particles, we can affect the difference in the energy between the valence band and the conduction band. So for larger particles of quantum dots, which are the same material regardless of size, the band gap energy is going to be very small. In other words, the distance between the valence band and the conduction band is very small. And that's for larger particles. Conversely, for really small particles, the band gap energy grows very wide. So the energy difference between the populated valence band and the empty conduction band is going to be much larger in the case of our smaller particles. And this ability to create quantum dots of varying size allows us an opportunity to modulate or manipulate that band gap of energy. Remember, that means that smaller particles of quantum dots emit and absorb energy of greater values than larger particles. And this ability to effectively tune the band gap gives rise to a tremendous amount of applications and uses for quantum dot materials. For example, it's possible that even the display that you're watching this video on is made up of quantum dots because they give rise to such vibrant color differences in a very small space like that of a cell phone or a laptop or a tablet. Typically, quantum dots range from 2 to 10 nanometers in size, meaning that they are just a few atoms wide. A friend of mine sent me these TEM images which are looking at the different sizes of quantum dot materials. Notice that the scale is incredibly small in the nanometer range. And this small size is what makes quantum dots so unique. Now there are various methods to synthesize quantum dots, but one of the most unique and one of the ways that contributed to winning the Nobel Prize, specifically for Moji Bawendi, is what is known as colloidal synthesis. Quantum dots can be prepared in solution, and depending on the reaction time, you can adjust the size of the quantum dots. So for example, the longer you run the reaction, the larger the quantum dots get. During synthesis, controlling the size of the dots is critical because as we mentioned earlier, the size directly impacts their optical and electronic properties. Different methods allow scientists to fine-tune quantum dots for specific applications. And remember that this ability to fine-tune the electronic properties of these quantum dots just adjusting for the particle size gives rise to typical uses in things like solar cell technology and even things like medical imaging. Quantum dots are made up from a variety of different materials, typically classified by what are the elements that make up those quantum dots. The most common type is probably made up of group 2 and group 6 elements from the periodic table. Cadmium selenide is a very common example of this, although things like cadmium telluride also are widely prevalent. These are probably the most well-studied quantum dot types and are used for things like displays, solar cells, and even some biological imaging. 3-5 quantum dots are typically made up from the groups 3 and 5 on the periodic table. Common examples of these are going to be things like indium phosphide and gallium arsenide are probably the two most common examples of these three five group types of quantum dots. These are considered generally more environmentally safe because they're not using cadmium as a part of the quantum dot, and therefore you see these applications typically for things that require environmental work. Carbon quantum dots are also new to the area of study and are typically considered to be much safer alternatives because you're using carbon, which is not gonna be poisonous. They're non-toxic, so that gives rise to many more applications for used in things like biological imaging. Perovskites are currently being widely studied, and one of the most common types are gonna be cesium, lead, bromide perovskites. This highly promising class of quantum dots have shown exciting applications in the fields of optoelectronics and next generation solar cell development. I hope you enjoyed today's video learning all about quantum dots. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions related to chemistry and make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another video. I'll see you next time.